What? What? What's wrong? Ah, uh, just look at him. Look at what? I don't know how we're ever gonna get him down from there. What is up there? Your hopes. Let's go! Good. We all feel Stop! good. Stop! Never gets rusty! What am I doing? Into my kitchen! Producer Drew, can you fix all this? <laughs> and when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet! Saw so that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. You got your hopes up. I worked it. I worked it out. Victory puppies, Iggy, seven in a row. I'm sorry. You missed some of them. You missed because you got sprayed by a skunk. Did you even win the fight? It's, it's, you were willing to fight. That's what matters. Friendly reminder that a Colorado Avalanche fan is going to edit this video. Hi, Drew. Leafs win! Four to three over the Colorado Avalanche. Big Bert! Bertuzzi dominating a name that has... No history in Colorado. None. Certainly nothing Drew has ever brought up. Real quick, this video is brought to you by SDPN because I decided so! We had a live stream watching along with this game. Thousands of people hanging out throughout the night. It was awesome. Lots of people became SDP VIPs. You can become a member on our YouTube channel, the SDPN YouTube channel. You can also subscribe as an SDP VIP on Apple Podcasts. And now, freshly, this is new news! Spotify. What does that get you? There's some perks. Namely, you get a fourth episode of the Steve Dangle podcast every single week. We've done three of them so far. The last one was mostly about that story where someone got scammed out of $50,000 and you'll never guess how. But in fairness to them, their career title is Financial Writer. You can find all that and more on the STPN YouTube channel if you become a member and subscribe on Apple Podcast and or I should say and Spotify. I mean, if you want to sign up for all three, go ahead. And if you're sitting on the fence, I just want to remind you my birthday is March 12th and uh, well, you know, you could get, you could always just get me that. Now, holy cow, that game was ridiculous. If it felt like an epic back and forth slobber knocker, that's because it was. You know the deserved a win meter that Money Puck does where it's usually like one team annihilates another and a surprising amount of the time the team that shouldn't have won does? This was sent in from a viewer named James Dengate. This is legitimately hilarious. I don't think I've ever seen a true 50-50 game on Money Puck. Dude, me neither. The deserved to win meter is basically like an algorithm. Like they, they figure it out, punching in a bunch of numbers. Who should win this game? This one finished dead in the middle, both teams at 50%. So let's talk about it. I always love when the stats back up what I see. And if you were watching on the stream, you know that we were looking at the shots on goal for the first period. It ended up being 12 to 11 in favor of the Leafs. But I said, uh, I'm pretty sure Calgary, Calgary? Calgary. What? Colorado. Anyway, it felt like Colorado had the vast majority of the offensive zone time. And they did. At one point, I saw their advantage was about four minutes. And it's unfortunate that Colorado played such a good first period because this period actually started poorly for the Leafs on a complete accident. Simone Benoit throws the puck over the glass like less than a minute in for a delay a game penalty. I'm trying to think of the last time the Leafs took one of those. Their power play is frankly not fair and should be illegal. Kale McCarr gives it to Nathan McKinnon who puts it in front absolutely perfectly. And that is, I believe, Miko Lekkinen. Miko, oh my God, I did it again. There's no way I just did it again. Arturi Lekkinen. There's no way I just did it again. No shot. Lekkinen's eighth of the season, but this is the truly goofy part. Makar picks up assist 48, and if that sounds impressive, well, how about this? McKinnon's 60th! And it's one nothing for the Avalanche early. Now, with the Leafs winning six straight and with Matthews scoring at an absolutely absurd pace and with this game coming up, there was a, a clip that a lot of people referenced. One that producer Drew put on the internet. But I set it into a microphone and camera, so it's my fault. Matthews is such a special player, and the way he scores goals seems to be so effortless. Is he a more dominant player than Nathan McKinnon? No, no. It's easy to think that until you watch them play each other, and you realize, yes, there are indeed tears to this. It's not close. The last time the Leafs played the Avalanche, you might remember that the Avalanche won! And Nathan McKinnon was absolutely ridiculously dominant. And after the game, Sheldon Keefe was talking about McKinnon like he was in another league. What I said is in terms of the best player in the game conversation, yes, Austin Matthews is incredible, but when it comes to Connor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon, 
there's just another tier and Matthews isn't close and ever since that moment it's like Austin Matthews was like all right what if I just never stopped scoring what if I just had one of the best goal scoring seasons like ever what if I just score 50 goals in February with a not impossible chance at 60 before the time it turns to March I mean probably not but would you be surprised and now here we are they go head to head again McKinnon with a great play for another point the Leafs have to overcome this. About halfway through the period, Miko Rantanen gets an assist. Nathan McKinnon again with 61, setting up Andrew Cogliano for Cogliano's fifth goal of the season and second against the Leafs. Andrew, can someone tell him he's not a former Leaf? And all of a sudden, the Avalanche are up 2 0 on home ice. They're the best home team in the league preposterous record they basically don't lose there so if you ever looked at your fantasy and gone how does Alexander Georgiev have 30 wins that's how that and he plays like every game and on top of being up to nothing which you can luck your way into they did not luck into it they were playing really really well the Leafs didn't do a terrible job of weathering the storm like they were blocking lots of shots but boy the avalanche were all over them in the offensive zone and then whenever the Leafs tried to break into the avalanche zone they kept getting stuffed at or just after the blue line. At this point you're going to need a bit of a break. That break comes in the form of Ross Colton taking an interference penalty on Tyler Bertuzzi. On the ensuing power play Mitch Marner had some truly goofy plays in this game like really good ones but they didn't result in anything. There was one where he cut through the abs like a hot knife through butter and if you want to know how good Mitch Marner is Check out the Colorado Avalanche's attention. Here's Mitch Marner with the puck. He's got the full attention of Kale McCarr and Devon Taves. That's probably the best pair in the entire NHL. But if you look right here, here's Tyler Bertuzzi all alone. Now, when this game was happening, in my head, I'm like, dude, Mitch, shoot that, please. Because that pass isn't getting through. Here's the darnest thing. It gets through. And Tyler Bertuzzi just taps it home on the power play. The Leafs are up. No, they're not. What, what are you, what are you gonna call them? Calgary again? What's going on? The Leafs are now only down one. Now, over the last little bit, we've been praising the Leafs' new look pairs and new look lines on the forward group. The power play as well. Like, dude, that power play unit is supposed to be the core five. It's supposed to be Marner, Nylander, Matthews, Tavares, Riley. And it was! except replace the captain with Tyler Bertuzzi. Dude, I really gotta praise John Tavares because not every player who makes what he makes, uh, has the tenure that he has, and is a captain, would take the quote unquote demotions like he has. But like, he's not always on the top power play unit. He's not playing with Nylander. He's playing with two rookies in McMahon and Robertson. Sometimes he'll get the extra shift out there with Matthews and Marner. We saw that a few times in this one, maybe half a dozen. You know, we often say leaders lead from the front, and that's very true. A lot of the guys on this team who are leaders are leading from the front. Riley's their best defenseman, and Matthews and Marner are absolutely tearing things up, and those guys wear letters too. But I love what Tavares is doing, taking a little step back, and I don't know about you, I think he's played great recently. And you know who's played way above the standard that he set this season is Tyler Bertuzzi and he gets another goal. I bet he's not going to get any more in this game. Well, second period comes around and I don't know exactly what was said at intermission, but the Avalanche did not quite have the same pace. They weren't all over the Leafs in the offensive zone quite the way they were in the first. The Leafs weren't backing up quite the way they were in the first, and they're actually breaking into the Av zone. And it took a while, but they got rewarded. A little over five minutes to go in the second period. Bowen Byram does a good job keeping the puck in as the Avalanche are in the Leafs offensive zone. He's swarmed by the entire second line. In one motion, Nylander, Domi, Bertuzzi, block the pass into the zone and break out for an odd man rush. They're passing it around, they try to score, it bounces, it bobbles, it goes all over the place and cleaning up the garbage, Bertuzzi again! Tyler Bertuzzi and it's Tyler Bertuzzi. You stop, stop booing. Stop booing, it's a good one. It was a good one. And that is, I believe, Miko Lekkonen. I thought it was a good line. Tie the game, great, sit back or don't. It's 2-2 two -two and about two minutes later, after a vicious board battle, again, this game was a slobber knocker. It was very playoff-like. Marner takes the puck and he's curling through the zone and he's looking for a spot and he's looking for a spot and he doesn't find a spot until he gets to the blue line, but it's actually an awesome play. 
Nyes is the one who got it to Marner. Matthews goes to his spot, stick in the air. Now it's not on the greatest angle, but we've seen Matthews score from there a billion times, so it's uh, any angle is a great angle for him. But while the Avs are doing their best to not give Marner the middle lane, to cut off Matthews from any danger, Matthew Nyes just sneaks in behind. Goes right to the front of the net, big body in a black jersey. Marner fires a harmless floating wrister that I, I probably doesn't even register as a scoring chance. But because Georgiev never sees this thing, it goes in 3-2, the Leafs lead. Mitch Marner, his 23rd of the year, and I see uh, Nyes had the assist, and I don't think TJ Brody originally got one, but he picks one up. It, Brody was fantastic in this game. He had a bee in his bonnet the whole time. He was being a jerk. He was digging. He was battling. The Leafs' better second period is rewarded. They outshoot the Avalanche 14 to 9, and they come out of the second period and into the third with a 3 2 lead. Third period, the Avalanche were all uh, better, to say the least. In fact, the Avalanche kind of saw the Leafs' third goal and said, well, we can do that. We often talk about a player's like shot and their, their shot quality, their accuracy, their power, but so many of the best players the best goal scorers in the NHL, they just read situations. Read and react. So look at the screenshot. Look, look at this play right here. This is where Rantanen takes the shot. Do you see a scoring chance here? Like, does this look particularly dangerous? I mean, it's not great. It's not ideal. The Leafs just had to make a, a few saves, a few blocks. The Avs have a flurry going. But usually if a player wants to take a wrister from there, you go, yeah, okay. I prefer you not to shoot at all, but this is the next best thing. Look at Samsonov. He can't see. There's a battle in front. There's a sea of black jerseys. He can't see the shot and it beats him. Just like Marner's did. 30th of the season for Rantanen. Moose, really good player. 3-3. Again, it's a slobber knocker. You knew this one wasn't going to be easy. And it keeps going, and it's a battle back and forth, and the Avalanche are tilting it in their favor, but it didn't really feel like they were running away with it. Until a graphic comes up on the screen well over halfway through the third period that says the Leafs don't have a shot on goal in the third, and they're getting outshot 7 to nothing. And for some reason, that concerned me much more than the Avalanche actually tying the thing. I think that might have to do with the fact that the Leafs have to score a goal in order to win the game now and you can't do that without shooting but sometimes a day comes a special day perhaps even your birthday and the hockey gods come and they give you a gift Miko Rantanen not even that much pressure on him puck over the glass penalty with less than five minutes to go in the third and Tyler Bertuzzi the birthday boy. Reminder that he came into this game with just seven goals on the season. Just waits, waits in front. That's his job. William Nylander with the puck. He goes behind the Avs net. Uh-oh. Little behind the back pass, short side before he goes around. And dude, the second you get the goalie looking, where are you going? Your gives looking one way, Bertuzzi's tapping it in the other. And howdy Bert! to Tyler Bertuzzi, the birthday boy hat trick. He scores 30% of his goals on the season in this single game and nothing more impressive than this stat becomes the first Toronto Maple Leaf in the over century history of the Toronto Maple Leafs to score a hat trick on his birthday. Stupid, silly, preposterous, the Leafs regain the lead with about three minutes remaining. Now, as soon as that puck drops for the next shift, you have one mission. Keep Georgiev in the avalanche net. Prevent them from getting the extra attack. Have the puck. Have the puck. Keep the puck in the neutral zone. Do whatever you gotta do. You don't even need to be dangerous. You just need to have the thing. And they do a really good job to start off. They kill a solid 45 seconds a minute. But eventually Georgiev finds his way to the bench. And you see what the Avalanche have out there and you're like, all right, people often call them a one-line team, but I feel like you can get a lot accomplished with this one line. McKinnon, Rantanen, Makar, Taves, Lekin, it, it, it almost doesn't matter, like beyond those first four that I mentioned. Block after block after block after block. Riley takes one off the back of the head. Bertuzzi's dropping into like the butterfly. He was he was almost better defensively than he was 
scoring a hat trick. Earlier on, he was heroically blocking shots without a stick. But as the clock is winding down, the Leafs calm it down. John Tavares gets the puck on his stick. He's gonna ice this thing with a shot. It's coming any second to John. 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 Here comes Nathan McKinnon. Ah! Ah! And with a shot in the final second, Nathan McKinnon is stopped. That translates to the Leafs won the game. John! John, I just did a thing about how you're a great leader, John. You're a great leader by not even being out there on the ice, and then when you are, you don't even shoot at the empty net! It doesn't have to be a slap shot, John. You don't play for that Ontario team! Dude, a few extra shout-outs in this one. Ilya Samsonov, spectacular. There were a few times he had a little bit of trouble with rebound control. TJ Brody keeping the puck from trickling between his legs and into the net. There was another one where Samsonov saved it off the goal line. I really can't say enough good things about this guy. Like, he had the worst case of the Yips I've ever seen. They were showing his save percentage before the game even began. He's still not even into the 890s. Like, or maybe he is after this game. But he's been so good recently. He's won like nine of his last ten or something goofy like that. And he's still not recovered. That's how unplayable he was at the beginning of the season. And this, he's back. He's back. Like, it's not like, oh yeah, he's playing well. Oh, he's playing better. No, it's like nothing happened. This is Samsonov from last year. Samsonov from last year was like, mm, capable starter. He can steal you a game or two. He's usually not gonna cost you one. That's Celia Samsonov. And watching him bounce back, like whatever he has done personally, whatever the organization has done for him, uh, full marks. Full, uh, it's the craziest recovery. None of us expected it. Uh, he didn't pick up any goals, but William Nylander, three assists in this one. Very nice. And even though he didn't score a goal, and this kind of melds into a conversation we were having on the podcast recently, the Leafs don't really have a shutdown line, right? And it's been a weakness of theirs, and they haven't been able... Like, they don't... What am I trying to say? They don't even really have the capability of building one. Like, you make a shutdown line out of shutdown players. So, like, David Camp is on there, I think. And then, who would you put on it? Like, Gregor's not in the lineup. Like, Yarn Croak, but he's not even healthy right now. So what it appeared to me the Leafs did as the road team, rather than the Avalanche doing it, is they just matched up first line versus first line. Maybe that was Jared Bednar throwing McKinnon out there against Matthews. It, it could be. Like, maybe the Avalanche were the ones who decided, well, you know, if we're not going to throw out the shutdown line or at that sh so someone who makes less than $13 million. But for as good as the McKinnon line was, Marner and Matthews and Nyes did their best against them. They picked up a goal as well. I, I really liked their game, even though... There were times where uh, they were doing a little more sinking than swimming. Like, was that game perfect? No, it wasn't. But they won. Even though they weren't perfect, they often weren't even the better team, they kept themselves the entire time in a position to win. It reminded me a lot of their gritty wins from the first round against Tampa last year. Like, there were a lot of times in that series they did not look like the better team. They won! And a lot of you sickos were saying, I can't wait for that series in June. First of all, that would be incredible. Second of all, I think I'd die, actually. You're telling me my heart is supposed to handle four to seven games of that? Most high-stakes hockey I've ever watched in my entire life? Yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of like it here. And by here, I mean uh, live questions. This isn't a question, it's just a really good tweet uh, from producer Nick. Nothing makes me happier than producer Drew miserable. What's with those f glasses, Nick. I can think of one thing, Nick. Uh, producer Drew miserable on camera because for the final seven minutes or so of the third period, he joined the stream and they lost. Now he's editing the footage for this video and probably not doing anything bad to it. Matthews is such a special player and the way he scores goals seems to be so effortless. Is he a more dominant player than Nathan McKinnon? No, no. It's easy to think that until you watch them play each other and you realize... Yes, there are indeed tears to this. It's not close. Speaking of producer Drew, here he is saying stuff. The difference tonight, Avs can't be taken a delay of game penalty with under five minutes left. The Leafs didn't have a shot on goal the first 14 minutes of the third period. Man, does that feel like a critique I've had for the Leafs many times this season. Like, did the Avs play a bad game tonight? No, they didn't play a bad game at all. They were pretty good. Like, they can be proud of the effort. But in a very crunch time scenario... 
They flubbed it. Mistakes happen and you try to avoid them. But oh, the timing of a mistake can be a killer. And I like this one. Is the biggest deadline acquisition going to be wool? Uh, well, I think second biggest. Uh, the biggest might be Tyler Bertuzzi. <laughs> like, dude, this is the tweet of the night from Nick Laflame. Leafs trade deadline is their own players getting good. Like, yeah, kind of. Dude, I said it around the time Riley got suspended for his nonsense with Ridley Grigg. Listen, you're not going to win every game. You're not going to have a great effort every night. But it's that time of year where you want to start locking it down and playing playoff hockey. The last seven games in a row? Yeah, that's what it's looked like. And it's not even just because they've won all seven games. For the first time since 2003, by the way. How is that real? There are players in the NHL younger than that. But the Leafs have won their last seven games because they should. A few of them have been like redonkulous blowouts, but this one, this hard fought nail biter back and forth with an extremely good team who's straight up a cup contender. Oh yeah, 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 that felt good. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Brand new Steve Dangle podcast on Monday. Why don't you become a member on the STPN YouTube channel and on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify or just pick one. But you have to pick one. Matthews is such a special player and the way he scores goals seems to be so effortless. Is he a more dominant player than Nathan McKinnon? No, no. It's easy to think that until you watch them play each other and you realize... Yes, there are indeed tears to this. It's not close.